Hello children and welcome to another nipple poppingly thrilling episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that's been closely monitored by Scotland Yard. You'll never take me alive, pig filth! My name's Mr. Wank Sock and I'm replacing Chris today because he drank too much hand sanitizer and now he's passed out in a pile of puke. But don't worry, I'm much funnier than that bald piece of crap. <laughs> hey, ah. oh, what the hell? What the hell's going on, man? Hey, Mr. Wanksock, what are you doing here? Oh, f***! I know! Oh, just in time! Just in time for what? To shoot Textbook Weekly, you big silly! Oh, God, Christ. Yep, yeah, you're right. Oh, bugger me blue, my head is absolutely killing me today. Did you slip something in my pint again? Just do the fucking jingle already, you malodorous slaphead! Textbook Weekly! So lots of tech news this week, but of course the big launch involved HMD Global spaffing out a total of six new Nokia branded smartphones, all of them sporting that traditional tasty Nokia design and also a nice friendly budget price that won't cause instant anal eruptions. So first up is the crazy cheap Nokia C20, which costs just 79 quid and comes in a charming choice of pink or blue. This Android Go phone has a 6.5 inch screen or 6.517 inches according to the specs. That's just HMD making sure they are on every last nanometer just like a teenage lad measuring his thingy. You've got a removable 3000 mAh battery, quite the novelty these days, plus an audio jack, micro SD support, a single 5 megapixel rear camera, and a 5 megapixel selfie shooter housed in a nipple notch. And the C20 is powered by the catchily named Unisoc SC98638 processor. Boner time. A step up from that is the Nokia G20 at 130 bob, and this is a full fat Android 11 blow with the same size HD Plus display, this time powered by a MediaTek Helio G35 chipset and sporting a non removable 5050 mAh battery. You got a quad lens rear cam, including a 48 megapixel main shooter and an 8 meg selfie cam too. And if you've got a bit more spare cash lying about, then definitely check out the Nokia X20 for 300 of your British pounds. This 6.67 inch monster upgrades the display to a full HD panel, plus you've got a Snapdragon 480 chipset with 5G support and a proper Zeiss branded camera arrangement. If that one gets you all tingly in the trouserial department, then definitely check out my hands-on review, which is already live here on Techspert. And all three of these phones also have a slightly cheaper sibling that is launching at the same time as them, the C10, the G10 and the X10, which cost a wee bit less, but also trim the specs slightly in order to achieve that cheaper price point. So for instance, you've got uh, the X20 sporting a 64 megapixel primary camera. In the case of the Nokia X10, that is reduced to a 48 megapixel snapper, along with some smaller memory and storage options. And all these Nokia blows except for the C10 will be hit in the UK from the end of April, although the X10 and the C20 are not expected here until June, but of course, good things come all over those who wait. That's... That's how the saying goes, right? And of course, more big news this week as LG finally dropped that axe on its smartphone division, which was kind of inevitable given the fact that it had been pissing away ridiculous amounts of money for countless years now. But all the same, that news hit tech fans pretty damn hard, just like that bit in Game of Thrones where Sean Bean had his lovely head lopped off. And oh, I guess, spoiler alert there for anyone who still hasn't seen Game of Thrones. Now, LG has been in the mobile game for decades now, but my personal introduction to LG phones was the batshit mental Optimus 3D with its weird migraine-inducing glasses-free 3D display and the precisely three apps that actually supported it. However, I was truly sold after the incredible LG G2, which I awarded a full five stars in Mobile Choice magazine. Although the leathered up G4 was certainly more of a character boasting spectacular hand feel that made my trouser truncheon rather twi- Trouser truncheon rather twitchy. That's a bit of a mouthful. That's what your mum thought last night. Of course, not everyone enjoyed every aspect of LG smartphones such as that incredibly heavy launcher, which was just as remorseless as any JRPG out there. If you didn't fully commit yourself to that rather intimidating menu setup and the slightly off the wall features, then chances are after just a few minutes, you'd end up torn to shreds by a giant rat rat or something like that. I think I'm kind of f***ing up my metaphors here. Of course, the Korean giant didn't always get things right. For one, those flex phones, aka the banana phones, were proper weird, and the G Flex 2 suffered from serious overheating issues that actually, to be fair, made it rather pleasant to slip inside your pocket during those winter months. And I'll never forget LG Boston about how that phone had a self-healing back, so basically as soon as I pulled it out of the box, what did I do? I flipped it over, got a paper clip, and scratched a massive gash from one corner to the opposite and did it heal up? Did it bollocks. And who can forget the puke-inducingly cute cartoon characters who embodied LG's AKA phone range, including a female one called Yo-Yo, whose singular trait was her love of greasy grub. 
truly a pink anthropomorphic blob after my own diseased heart. But it was impossible to get cross with LG even when it spaffed out total duds because let's face it, it was one of the few mobile manufacturers out there who was truly innovative. And yeah, apparently I'm one of the only tech YouTubers, if not the only tech YouTuber, who thought that the LG Wing was an absolutely frankly ridiculous idea. But you know, again, at least it was different from everything else out there. And I do wonder what other crazy shit that LG would have spaffed out if it had continued to produce smartphones. And just as I thought when cruel boy King Joffrey was violently assassinated at his own wedding, I reckon that the world will now be, sadly, a less interesting place. Oh, spoiler alert again, I guess. And last up this week, Lenovo launched its latest Legion Duel 2 gaming phone to take on the ROG 5 and the Red Magic 6. This big glass bastard with the obligatory flashing arse packs in some serious tech, including a near 7-inch AMOLED screen, dual cooling fans and the same hilariously suggestive pop-up selfie cam action. A dual battery setup means you'll charge this whopper in around half an hour, while Lenovo has crammed in a buttload of gaming features including a multitude of physical triggers and some proper strong haptics. The Lenovo Legion Duel 2 can be yours from mid-May, starting from €799. Pre-orders are open now, and my full gaming review will be live imminently. And those are the biggest tech headlines from this week just gone, so now, regrettably, it is time for the part of the show that's about as enjoyable to watch as that bit where Rob Stark got torn to shreds, and then his mum... Oh yeah, more spoilers, but come on, man, how old is Game of Thrones by now? Surely everyone has seen it, especially after a year of freaking lockdown. I mean, what have you been doing with yourself? Otherwise, have you been watching Mrs. Brown's Boys? You haven't been watching Mrs. Brown's Boys, have you? If you've been watching Mrs. Brown's Boys, ban from the show. Viewer comments. Alrighty, so to get the ball rolling this week, we've got Reese Clunas who says, what is the matter with this guy? Uh, I don't know, Reese. it could be one of several different things. It could be uh, too little alcohol, too much alcohol, not enough caffeine or a caffeine overdose. You see, my system is kind of like a fine antique engine. You've got to keep it perfectly lubricated and in full work in order. Otherwise, it just kind of shits the bed and goes a bit cuckoo. Pre-order your own Mr. Wank sock right now. Just $19.99, including shipping. Comes in two flavours, cheese or extra crispy. So next up, MSM007100 says, My girlfriend says your eyebrows are eating your face. Um, don't worry, mate, it's a symbiotic relationship, basically. They sit there, they keep my face from freezing over in this stupid f***ing British weather, and in turn, they absorb all of the heat generated by my immense brain when I'm thinking up all of those hilarious, clever knob gags. Uh, next up, Richard B says, What unicorn superpower is a six? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, one second, Richard. Here we go. Phoebe's princess powers. Uh, number six is the ability to read minds, apparently, which sounds quite good, but then I guess it would be kind of a blessing and a curse. Just be kind of distracting when you're, you know, speaking to someone and all you can hear in your head is, oh, what a c -t. I wish you'd just f off. That light is shining right off the top of his bald head. Uh, next up, Neutrally Presented says, nice vid, man. Much love from Mongolia. And Mongolia, much like Finland, was a place I knew very little about until I watched a uh, tour program about it hosted by Ramesh Ranganathan, uh, which is, uh, looks like f***ing awesome fun in there. I'm, I mean, I'm all in just to check out the ridiculously massive statue of Genghis Khan. That thing looks fucking crazy. And apparently Mongolians are big fans of vodka as well, which I can 100% jump on board with as well. You've even got apparently milk vodka. Not sure if that's actually a thing or just some bullshit rumor that I read about. Uh, but yeah, not really a big fan of milk, but if it's got booze in it, that'll work. Uh, next up, David Fasaku, sorry if I've completely f***ed up the pronunciation of that, uh, says, dude, what's your beef with MKBHD? Uh, absolutely zero beef with MKBHD. Uh, that's why I was just pointing out the uh, difference uh, in the style between his videos and mine. He's gone for the slick studio vibe, the really high production values, and I've just gone for cramming in as many inappropriate dick jokes into 10 short minutes as possible. The only thing that lad's done which has knocked me a little bit is uh, not so long ago he published a video which was titled something like, uh, Why Does Nobody Ever Buy a Sony Smartphone? And if you look back through all the smartphone videos he'd done previously, they're 99% Samsung, Apple, with occasional forays into like OnePlus. In fact, this very topic actually came up on this show. I can't remember exactly how, but it meant I dove back into his back catalogue and saw how long ago he'd actually featured a Sony smartphone. And the answer was the Xperia Z5 Premium, which came out in 2015. So yeah, gee, I wonder why more people don't know about and therefore go out and buy Sony smartphones. Ah, oh, a bit of a downer here. Uh, Etienne says Jeffrey is indeed dead. Jeffrey uh, of Rainbow fame, if you missed last week's episode. He apparently died in 2018. 
Uh, the papers said pneumonia, but we all know that Zippy held him down while George battered him with a golf club. I mean, let's face it, it's almost certainly private games gone awry in the Rainbow household. I wouldn't be surprised if Bungle sat on his face and smothered the poor bastard. Uh, still on the subject of Rainbow, uh, it might as well become like a full-time segment in this show now, pretty much. Uh, Wolf says, OMG, Rod, Jane and Freddy. Many a night I fell asleep with Jane on my mind. Thanks for bringing back some happy memories. Happy memories indeed. And you know what? I reckon that Rainbow is probably actually responsible for my awakening as a nipper. I seem to recall watching her clamber into bed sandwiched in between Rod and Freddy and both of my testicles immediately thunking down into place. Uh, next up Amanda says your reviews rock happy bourbon or tequila day. Uh, is, that, is that a thing? Bourbon or tequila day? Why not bourbon and tequila day? Uh, next up Neil says Chris have you ever been to Ireland and if not why not and if so why didn't you stay? You know what I never ever have set foot on Irish soil and I don't know why you know it's really freaking close and it's full of pubs. I think it's the same reason I haven't really been on many holidays around the UK in general. I've only been to Wales the once for instance Scotland a handful of times but that's about it. I think it's just because this everything's so close you just like oh I can do that anytime so you know let's let's bugger off around the world while well, you can. And actually, I'm pretty bloody glad that I did that. Well, I think I'm probably not going to go on a foreign holiday again any anytime soon. Uh, so yeah, so Ireland, I'll, I'll probably f***ing row over there uh, before too long. Get myself over there for the Fanny Festival, uh, the, uh, the Muff Festival. <laughs> I was on the Muff Festival, um, which, yeah, I mean, that's got to be done. Uh, oh, obligatory tech question of the week. Damien says, OK, so here's my question, buddy. I have broken the display of my Snapdragon S10. Is it worth fixing it up or should I go for a new phone? If new, I really want one as common compact as the S10 because I'm bored of huge ones. Not like your mum then. Hey. Yeah, so he's got the Snapdragon model of S10, so good on you there. Good choice. Um, but apparently it's 250 euros to get the screen fixed. Ouch. Um, so yeah, I'd say probably go for a new one instead. Uh, with that criteria, I'd say probably the Pixel 5 is one of your best bets. It's a 6 inch, so reasonably compact like the S10. Good bit of uh, tech, up to date specs and everything. And, uh, you know, a couple of years guaranteed OS and security updates. You've got that future proofing as well, which you wouldn't really have with the S10. Uh, otherwise, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II as well. Another classic, nice and compact as well. Good, comfortable hand feel for now, for now. Uh, but I did round up the best compact phones at the start of the year, so go check that out for uh, more on all that shenanigans. And last up, uh, because again, time has just friggin' disappeared as always, uh, Leah says, uh, what's your favourite cereal and is it milk first or cereal first? A uh, few, a question more that's on my sort of technical level. And gotta admit, I'm more of a Pop-Tarts man as well and therefore negates the need for milk. So a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Fantastic comments as always. Apologies if I didn't get to yours uh, this week. I'll try and smash through again as many of them as possible next week, Friday at noon. So do leave your comments, theories, uh, random remarks, constructive criticism, etc. down below. So let's have a quick look at the week ahead. And oh boy, it's the big one, baby. Wednesday the 14th of April, Sony is going to be launching its fresh new experience. Several shiny delights, all very long and very slender coming at you. That's actually happening at 8.30 a.m. UK time on that Wednesday. It's nice and early, so jump out of bed, wipe the crust from your eyes, empty your bowels, and then get ready for a good bit of Xperia 1 Mark III and Xperia 10 Mark III action. Next, we've got a couple of other bits as well, like TCL will potentially be launching some new smartphones, it looks like, on Thursday the 15th, so stay tuned for some potentially hands-on action with those. And then, of course, good bit of Techspert Weekly on Friday and some other fun bits in between as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching all of this shower of shit once again. Please do plug, subscribe, and ding that notifications bell if you would like it to be an experience that you have again. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend, everyone. Cheers. Love you.